What I'd like to talk to you about is how the decisions you make on a daily basis literally shape your health. And in doing so, they literally shape your future because you are the product of the decisions that you've made previously. And what we need to do as we move forward is we need to consider how we want to be next month, next year, in 10 years time. Because when we align better our health span to our lifespan, when we focus more on our health and the kind of condition that we intend to be and want to be in as we move forward, we literally empower ourselves to have greater physical independence as we age. And this really matters because as we age, the quality of our life is directly correlated to the level of our physical independence. And so what we want to be is the most robust, intact, engaging version of ourselves on a daily basis so that we can live meaningfully and we can live well for as long as possible. But before we do that, before we head down that road, what I want to do is, is lift the lid. And I want to have a look beneath the surface and show you really what you truly are and how magnificent that truly is. So we share a lot in common with the universe around us. And in fact, here we have some images that show that when we start to look beneath the surface at those brain cells, at our DNA, at the way our eye not only looks but functions and we see how that correlates to some of the images we've taken from the deepest aspects of space. What people fail to appreciate on a daily basis, and part of this is our fault as researchers and scientists in how we convey messages, is just how aligned we are with the universe around us and how we are an expression of that universe. And that's important to note. One, we should never take life for granted because it truly is a miracle. But secondly, because we are complex, superbly complex. You will never own a piece of equipment, of technology, that is as advanced as you are. What happens beneath the surface is truly magical. And in fact, another truth be told is that we're still figuring that stuff out. We've come a long way. Our scientific understanding has told us so much about the way that the body functions and performs, but there is still more to know. But I go back to that notion that part of the responsibility in making people aware of just how incredible they are comes back to us because all too often, when we start to describe anatomical factors to people, we use images like this. So for instance, here we have the brain, which again, any person who specializes in research around the brain, around mind, around consciousness and cognitive performance will, will confidently state that we know far less than we actually do know. This is a, a huge area of mystery and we are probably only at the doorstep of figuring this stuff out. But when we talk about it, we typically show images like this and it's very one dimensional, it's very flat and it shows some of the geography of what happens within that space. But the reality is when we look at the left, this is an actual picture of what's going on, the electrical activity. And again, to the right, we see one of the furthest images that the Hubble telescope has captured into deep, deep space. And we see this alignment. We see just how much we reflect the universe around us. So when we look up, when we gaze upon the stars with wonder, quite rightly so, we should also take a moment to reflect and introspect because we are every bit as wondrous as what we see above us. It's contained within us. That's really important to note because all too often, we take an approach about the things that we do and the decisions we make, particularly when it comes to our nutrition and then again, our activity and our, our exercise behavior. That kind of takes these broad steps across and looks at things far too simply. There is so much going on. There's a lot that we need to address and get right. And because there is a lot that we need to get right, it's really easy, even with the best of intentions, to fall short or even in the worst instance, to get things wrong. So we have to consider this when we consider some of the language that we use, when we look at the, our, our consideration of cellular balance, of ratios. And again, we talk a lot about cells and 
how to create the healthy cell. We talk about cell membrane permeability. We talk about the integrity of the cell. We talk a lot about that 6-3 omega ratio. And often we use pictures like this when we're doing so. And on the right, we've got something that again is flat and shows something of the process that is taking place within that cell. But the reality is far more involved and far more complex. And when we understand that, I think that's the moment that we realize we really do have a, a duty of care to consider what it is that we're influencing when we make these decisions. Here's a better image. This is now starting to show you really the reality of what a cell looks like. And if, you know, if we consider this for a moment, it looks far more like a cross section of a planet when we see those outer crust and those layers and we see all that activity that's going on within there and all these key component parts. It's not flat. It's not something that we can just take a surface glance at. There's so much happening beneath the surface. In fact, so when we look at this, and this is a detailed illustration of the cell. And this was gathered from multiple layers of complex information derived from NMR. Uh, when we're looking at things like MRI scanning technology that really zones us in to a much closer level. And what we can see here is a landscape of activity. And this landscape of activity is what we're actually trying to influence. It's what we're actually trying to sustain and support when we engage with our nutritional practices. This, this image has far more in common with this, which is a, a bird's eye view of New York City. It is an advanced infrastructure that relies wholly on effective communication, diversity and balance. It requires everything to be in its place. It requires that continued interaction. If a piece is missing, then something goes wrong. That's just simple fact. If consistently there isn't enough of what we need in place, and if we consider New York City for a moment, if there weren't enough taxis to take all those people to all those places they need to be, then the system would work less effectively. The system would start to break down. And that's what we need to consider because this is very similar to what is happening inside of us. We have this really advanced ecosystem that relies on the exact same components as the ecosystems we've invented, that we rely on in our day-to-day -day lives. And if there are parts missing, or if there is an insufficient amount of certain parts, then the system starts to come under strain. The system starts to break down. This is a, a, a flat representation, I guess, of some of how that system works. And this is in a viral condition. This is a, a, an insight to our immune response when there is a virus present. And we don't need to dwell on that. What we need to focus on are the component parts of this, where we can see those vitamins and the, and the key role they play within that communication, within that ecosystem. If there are insufficient amounts available, then the system won't work well. If we are deficient, if they are not there at all, then the system is compromised from the start. When we look at our dietary choices, and we should look at our dietary choices, we should be looking and working towards making better dietary choices. It's still difficult to ensure that we have sufficient amounts on a daily basis. That's just a fact in the modern world. It simply is. There are multiple things that influence that outcome. One, food availability. Secondly, the integrity of the food. We know that there is such disparity amongst even fresh foods with regards to what nutrients they contain, that it's, it's more of a challenge. That doesn't mean that we shouldn't consume food that way. We 100% should, but we should also be looking at what strategies we can implement to make sure that this really sophisticated and advanced communication network is dealt with and satisfied and served on a daily basis. Because this is a simplified version of all that goes on within every second of every single day. Whether we're in a viral state or not, we rely so much on our, our immune function just to function ourselves on a daily basis. Let's go now into the center of the human universe which is the gut. 
this really is where it all begins for us. And again, on the left there, we have a typical graphical illustration of the kind of processes that take place. But on the right, we've got a real actual photograph of that ecosystem. It's diverse. It is equivalent to a tropical rainforest. It is well balanced. It is carefully balanced. And that area, that ecosystem needs to be fed. It needs to be nurtured on a daily basis. Anything that engages with that system has an impact and effect. Nothing is passive. So when we put good stuff into the system, and when we make sure we've got those dietary fibers and we feed that environment and, and encourage it to flourish, then it's best equipped to help us as best as it possibly can, as it was designed to do over all those years and years of evolution. When it's in that kind of condition, we can absorb nutrients from food better. And it's often said that you are what you eat, but it's more accurate to say you are what you absorb. If the center of the human universe is compromised from the start, if it's not sufficiently served with regards to the nutrients it requires, then it can't function effectively in order to get us to those cellular aspects. It, it simply can't. We need to address this because the fact is, is that approximately 70% of our immunity is contained within the intestines. So it really is the center of our universe. We need to care for it. We need to nurture it. And the truth be told, there's a lot of what we do across the globe that has the opposite effect. I would never want to invoke any type of food fear, but there is a truth to say that if we are not engaging and we're not bringing something into that system that's positive, then we're gonna be having a negative effect. And over time, that takes its toll. Over time, that has a prolonged impact on our capacity to absorb nutrients. And it's this slow road towards a compromised ecosystem that starts to lead us towards health compromises and problems. So it is important that we eat right and we eat well, but it's still difficult to serve this with regards to modern food availability and ensure that we have sufficient amount of what we need in there doing its job so that its job can be done as best as possible. I often say when people consider their food choices is choose your environment. Where's the place that you like to be? Where do you go in your downtime, on your vacation? Do you choose to go into the mountains? Do you choose to go to the beach, the meadows, the valleys? Where do you choose to go? Because what you need to start consider is the places you would, you would choose to go, that we, you, you would opt to be, need to reflect the places that you would bring within you. And when we are wholly reliant on foods that have been artificially um, created, enhanced, flavored, all across that spectrum. We need to consider, are these the environments that I would choose to go to? Because what you need to do is let those environments be within you and start to make a more intelligent, informed choice about your food orientation, about where it's derived from, what's been the process of taking it from where it was into what appears on your plate. We do need to be more conscious about this. We need to be more actively conscious and proactive about those choices because over time, we reflect what we do. We are the outcome of all those decisions we make. And we know that food is powerful. Our, our choice of diet influences psychologically as well as physically. It, it literally shapes how we think. And when we start to mold our thoughts based on the foods that we consume, then it doesn't take too long until we're in a position then actually we have to consider what's informing my food choices because taste buds are so malleable. They can be educated, but which is worth noticing, they can be re-educated, which is even more powerful, I guess. But we start to become influenced not only on a physiological level and a pathophysiological level, but we start to be really influenced on a psychological level. And then we end up in this spiral of, of thoughts that affect behavior and behavior that affect thoughts. And we know that there is published data that's, that paints a far grimmer picture than this. We know now, and this is a publication from The Lancet, we know now that the quality of food that we eat, the types of food orientation that we have, literally impact upon our not only our life expectancy, but also all-cause mortality. 
So we, it's powerful, the choices we make from spoon to mouth, from fork to mouth, from each slice of the food that we eat should be informed. Of course, there is room for those kind of treat behaviors, but we need to strike a better balance. Because right now, the real global food pyramid looks like this, whereas 60% of all foods we consume come from ultra processed sources. And actually we can add on top of that an average of another 15 to 20% from other types of processing food. And what makes up the smallest amount, less than 20% more often, are those better choices. And we need to flip that. We need to get that back so that 80% of what we do, what we consume, is the really good stuff that is working with us and for us and enhancing those complex systems and not working against us. And then we can, without any guilt, without any remorse and without any concern, enjoy that 20% of treat because life is a wonder and it's an incredible ride and we should enjoy the journey and food is a joy, but we just need to strike a better balance. We need to fall back in love with better foods because we need to fix this because we know the impact that the processed foods and the ultra processed foods has upon the system. They have everything in an abundance that we need to have less of. They're high in sugar, packed with those omega-6s, high in salt. We see a range of things that in reality, most of our messages are about how can we reduce these things down. It's very rare that I would talk as a nutritionist about eliminating anything from your diet. It's about having things on healthy terms so that you're in control and you're in command. And that's all about making informed food choices on a daily basis. And you should be working towards advancing your health status not just on a daily basis, but with every meal and snack that you take on board. Consider how much is this working for me? How much is this taking me forward into the quality of life and the standard of life I expect and deserved? Because you are unique and you should treat yourself as such. Often at this kind of interchange, the debate over exercise athleticism will come into play with regards to, well, if I eat well and I'm doing my physical activity and I'm doing my exercise, surely I'm doing all these things right, then actually the notion of needing further support or impact on my diet means less because I'm doing all of these things. It's not that simple. And in fact, as someone who spent the past 25 years working with elite athlete populations, effective supplementation is more often than not a key part of our nutritional strategy. Where it can be problematic when we start to consider exercise and elite performance is we can fall into these kind of three categories. One, energy becomes a major focus. So we start to consider on the energy requirements of the task, of the exercise, of the sport and event, and we start to structure the diet off a macro profile and approach to make sure that we've got enough energy available. That's an important part, but it often comes at the cost of looking at the quality of the diet because we've become so focused on the quantity of the diet. When we focus on the quantity of the diet, we're drawn into this notion of calorie counting becoming a common language. So this starts to create a minefield if we don't keep a keen eye on those quality factors as we move forward. And also adding to that is a simple fact that as we increase the intensity, the duration, the demands of exercise, well, we see actually further compromise and stress added to the immune system. So the immune system and immune function has to work harder to maintain homeostasis, the dynamic art of equilibrium. So for us to be biologically, physiologically intact and robust, we need to counter the fact that the benefits of this exercise, of this training comes at a cost. And we need to reflect that in our diet. Because if you remember, that glimpse we had of that complex ecosystem. That's how it works. That's where it's functioning through and as each and every day. When we increase the demand, we put more stress on that system, then we need to add more of the components that keep that system intact. So it's simply not enough for us, and it's certainly not the intelligent approach, is to consider, well, my diet is pretty good, and I do my physical activity and exercise, because we know from those fields that that's great, but we still need to do more and we can do better because we have the means to do so. Food, food technology 
has come a long way and we should embrace that. We can do things better, so we should. We should eat well to be well. That's a key fact. It is directly correlated with all-cause mortality. We've already looked at that slide and considered that evidence. We know that it shapes how we feel each and every day from our thoughts to our physical wellness. So we should be looking at how we can optimize each and every single one of these areas and do so effectively. But let's get real for a moment. We have to do it in a way that lends itself to human behavior because we have societies now that are based on convenience. And in fact, more often than not, it's convenience that has taken advantage of people's health. Because we can do things quick, we talk about things in fast terms, fast food. We want something immediately. We live busy lives. So convenience calls to us and makes us realize that we can do something with greater simplicity. And that's what we need to embrace. Rather than trying to invoke this whole stock change in human behavior, rewinding a clock perhaps 100 years, what we need to do is get sensible about whole food choices. We need to make them the priority. We also need to get real and proactive about how much we move. And we need to embrace that and do it at the right level so that it enhances our well-being and doesn't put further stress and strain needlessly on that vital immune system. And in order to do so, we need to invoke 21st century solutions. We have within our reach, in our hands, intelligent products that shape effective strategies that are ethically derived, which is ever more important as we move forward. We consider in every kind of possible context the impact that we have on the planet and how we can do things better and we can get more from less. And we need to look at sustainable behaviors. We need to make choices based around our diet and our activity that we can start today and we can continue forever. It's not about dietary interventions. They typically fail. When we work towards a set outcome, maybe it's the beach body and you give yourself three months to achieve it. Great. What happens after the three months? Well, all the statistics tell us that people put the weight back on. And in fact, more often than not, put more weight back on. Intervention-led dietary changes don't work. We need sustainable behaviors. We need simple, effective, intelligent products that create a solution that we can embed every single day. We need to consider balance of the ecosystem of ourselves at a cellular level. We need to look to restore on a daily basis the center of the human universe. And we need to protect ourselves from who knows what and whatever comes next from what we know and from the things that we're yet to discover, our immune system is the vital component that keeps us intact, that keeps us well and allows us to move forward and is a fundamental aspect of aligning our health span to our lifespan. And remember, you are unique. This life is yours. You are a reflection of the universe. You should not accept anything less than the best for yourself and your loved ones as you move forward. Because for whatever else there is above and beyond this, we have this right now and it's incredible. And the more we engage, the more we explore, the better we feel, the more we do, the more filled, the more satisfied we are. Life is a miracle. Life is rare. Despite all these images from deep space, we can't see it anywhere else. So we should embrace it. We should set our personal standards high and our dietary choices and our choices of supplementation and how we advance our health on a daily basis should reflect the value we put on ourselves and those around us.